In the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic and quarantine, JSDD's Way Center looked for ways and means to bring the outside world into the homes of each participant. This program has always been about getting out and into the community to see, hear, and do. With photography trips, art exhibits, local botanical and sculpture gardens, musical and theater performances, to enjoy and foster learning. Seeking out these opportunities has led us to develop relationships with local organizations and performance groups. So pre-COVID, we would meet in one space, um, pretty much in a circle, and we would do our thing, have a great time, making music together, dancing, moving, singing, drumming, um, very lively, always a very lively group. I think the relationship with the Way Center is really strong uh, for us, and I think it's mutually beneficial. It, it, from our perspective, it's community outreach. And for the Way Center and their members, it's an opportunity to experience the arts, usually in person, and to be, um, to kind of be exposed to, to different art than they might see in other exhibition spaces. So I, I would imagine that the idea of continuing this relationship throughout the pandemic, but doing it online instead of in person was just a natural reaction from both my side and, and Harry's side. We weren't doing virtual tours uh, of a gallery before. We would go in person. Um, and uh, and um, they're important. I mean, Adam, Adam has a real gift with connecting with our members. He, he knows them well enough to have an individual connection with them. And he's still able to do that, you know, they're just in little boxes, you know, and, and Lara with Marafani, you know, um, it's a drumming circle. So you're like, how the heck are we going to do a drumming circle virtually? And Lara was able to, you know, use her brilliant brain and figured out how members could make drums out of coffee cans. And so that's what we did. Um, it promotes thinking outside of the box. Um, it promotes um, uh, engagement in different ways, which is ultimately what inclusion is about. Um, inclusion is about engaging in different ways with different people. And so that's why, um, if anything good came from this pandemic, it's the ability for the entire world to think outside of the box. I approached it in a similar manner than I would facilitate live. Um, there's a lot of prompting that goes on, direct, um, you know, addressing friends directly, you know, knowing most of the members pre-COVID, pre-Zoom, really helped because I, we knew their needs. We knew, you know, when they would need a prompt or some encouragement to, um, to, to re-engage them. Gigi, can you say it one more time, what you noticed? And uh, I love them. Ooh, a hollow uh, drum. How did you know it was hollow? You are a smarty girl. There's really just good. a lot of magic percolating, in my view, for, for the whole the whole session. Those moments of, of recognition, recognition and recall. Um, the members have a pretty big West African music and dance repertoire. Um, which we, you know, we cycle through. Um, and so when they make those connections, right, when they, when they hear the music before we tell them what this music is and can name it, ooh, that to me is like hot stuff. Thank you. And voila. This instrument is called a gongoma. I love this word. Letter G, right? 
Gongoma. You say it. Gongoma. Yeah. Gongoma. Nice. Jamal, can you read my chicken scratch? Can you tell what the letters are? Gongoma. G O N G O M A. Go. Voila. Oh, excellent. Thank you for that. I'm so glad you could read my green, writing. Green, green means go. Green means go. Gongoma. Let's go. One guy. Let's play some music. Gongoma. And then conversely, our moments of relaxation, when the whole group is able to self-regulate through a computer <laughs> and you can really, it's very palpable, you can see it, right? You can see the bodies releasing and relaxing. Um, that to me is magical every time. And to be the, you know, the vehicle, the person that sort of drives that um, off, you know, drives that offering, shall we say. <laughs> um, yeah, and the smiles and laughing and excitement and members stepping up to be leaders. That's something that I'm working on a lot, um, to have them lead a song or a chant or a pattern for us to play. I love those moments. Um, you know, there's certain members that every time they're going to raise their hand or want to step up and some are more reluctant and then they take a chance. They push the envelope. I think it's a really safe space for a lot of uh, magic to happen. Uh, as Harry mentioned, I'm visiting you. I'm used to people coming to the George Siegel Gallery at Montclair State visiting me, but here I am infiltrating your Zoom class. Um, so thank you for welcoming me back. And uh, it's great to see so many familiar faces. And uh, what we'll do today is we'll take a look at artwork from the permanent collection of Montclair State University and also some artwork from previous exhibitions. But the theme of today's exploration of art, uh, which I see Harry has tapped into with his background, is celebrating Women's History Month. Uh, we're now halfway through the month of March. Um, and so it's a good time to look at some really strong and powerful women artists who are associated with Montclair State University. Shortly after the pandemic hit the East Coast last spring, I actually was in a group show in Brooklyn. Um, the, the gallery never opened to the public, but the, the exhibit went ahead anyway. And I remember sending out a mass email to, to people announcing this exhibit. And I mentioned like, not the highest priority right now, but just wanted to let you all know that this exhibit is happening slash not happening. <laughs> and one of my paintings is in the show and, and one of my friends wrote back and said, oh, I, I disagree. I think art is more important now than ever. It communicates, I think at, at its most ideal, it communicates common humanity, right? And it, whether it's a book or a piece of music or, or a film or a painting, it, it expresses something that perhaps only that one individual could express, but that thousands or maybe millions of others can relate to and can, can empathize with or, or understand or appreciate. And so this is a, a very well-known sculpture that George Siegel made in 1980. Um, it was commissioned one year earlier by a, a wealthy patron named Peter Putnam. And this sculpture is now in New York City in a public square called Christopher Park. And, um, you know, people go there all the time. It's people kind of take pilgrimages there because it's such an important site. Even though and, the, the um, format or the platform was different from being physically together in, in a shared space to being online, I didn't want to change my approach, which is usually inquiry driven. And my, my hope with these interactions is to get the participants to be invested in what we're discussing. And I think the best way to do that is to try to um, 
offer them ownership of the experience. What you just talking about and Andy Wapa, huh? Oh, so the the artist I was just talking about was George Siegel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did, did Andy did um did um Andy Waha die too? Yeah, I think back in 1987, if if I remember the year correctly. Yeah, so he's he's been what gone album, a long what time. Album, um, I know he produced the Rolling Stones. You know, he may have done an album cover no, for I, the Rolling Stones I, I too. Looked, I looked him up. Oh. <laughs> I know David Bowie. Okay. Well, here he is right behind me. We talk about the art pieces. It's interesting how other people see something and uh, other people see another thing. It's pretty cool. Kimmy, go ahead. You had a question. Adam, I can't wait to actually meet you in person. I'm, I'm sorry? I, I, I can't wait to meet you in person. Oh. In September. Thank you. Well, like, ho hopefully in September, maybe October, we can, we can get um, some Waste Center groups onto campus. Well, I'm excited for that. Thank you. <laughs> For sure, for thank sure. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, me. Adam. Thank you very thank much. You. Yes, thank you.